For nearly 20 years, Green Boots was a creepy landmark near the summit of Everest. No, it's not a monument or some kind of art piece. It's the body of a person who died while climbing. Every climber ascending the North Face had to pass by this body, which made Green Boots possibly the most famous corpse on Everest. This person was one of eight climbers whose lives were claimed by a blizzard in May 1996. And the story of the Green Boots is not the only one. On Everest, there are hundreds of scattered bodies most of them are less well known to become eerie attractions, the tallest mountain on earth is covered with dead bodies. And no one tries to get rid of them, because everything is pretty complicated. And yes, it's not about back then, but about now. If you, God forbid, were to go to Everest and die, your body wouldn't be retrieved. A bit of coffee, and I'll explain in more detail. And before I forget, here's an unobtrusive reminder to hit the like button if you forget to do it at the end of the video. Every year, thousands of people from around the world come to Everest in hopes of conquering the most famous peak in the world. And not just the most famous, but also the highest. Everest's height above sea level is 29,000 feet. Not everyone manages to achieve this feat and come back alive, or even just come back. But sometimes the living come for the dead. On October 2, 1979, German climber Hannelor Schmatz was descending from the summit of Everest via the south route. At an altitude of about 27,200 feet, she sat down, said to her guide, water, water, and died. Hannelor was the fourth woman to summit Everest. Her body remained on the mountain. For years, anyone trying to conquer Everest via the south route could see Hannelor's remains. Her body was frozen in a sitting position leaning against a backpack with open eyes and hair blowing in the wind. Creepy. Maybe that's why people tried to get Hanalore down from the mountain. First, there were two Nepali climbers, police inspector Yogendra Bahadur Thapa, who was 36 years old, and his guide Ang Dorji, age 35. They wanted to recover Hanalore's body during a Nepalese police expedition, but both died on October 24, 1984. These were very experienced climbers, but even for them, the task turned out to be impossible. In the end, after 20 years, the wind blew Hanalore's remains away. As of today, more than 340 people have died trying to reach the summit of Everest or return from it, and that's just the ones we definitely know about. A small disclaimer, we can't show the bodies of the deceased for ethical reasons, so we've covered them with body bags. If you're really interested in seeing everything uncensored, you can easily find information about them online. But in reality, the dead just lie on the mountain where they ended up in their final moments. And people die there every year. Well, with a small exception, only two years from the start of observations were free of deaths. 1977, when only two people reached the summit, and 2020, when Nepal stopped issuing permits due to the pandemic. Otherwise, Everest regularly claims the lives of those who try to conquer it. Until 1996, one in four climbers died during an ascent, and in 1996, one in seven died. The earliest recorded deaths date back to 1921, when during a British reconnaissance expedition to Everest, two people died on the way to the mountain. One of them isn't even named anywhere, just unknown porter. The second was Alexander Kellis, a British scientist, but neither of them even reached Everest. The victims of the mountain appeared only the next year. Then seven people died. All of them were porters who got caught in an avalanche during a new British expedition. But no one knows for sure how many corpses are on Everest today. In 2015, a study was done and they estimated that there are more than 200 bodies on the mountain. It sounds like Everest is ready to kill anyone. Actually, although Everest is considered the mountain with the highest number of deaths, it doesn't have the highest death rate. The reason is that Everest, being the tallest mountain on the planet, gets a lot of attention and is a coveted summit for many climbers. There are a lot of people just climbing, or trying to climb up here. That's why there are so many deaths. There are more than 10 common causes of death on Everest. In first place are avalanches. They've claimed the lives of at least 77 people. In second place in this grim ranking are falls. They've killed 71 people. And finally, altitude sickness. It's claimed the lives of at least 36 climbers. The main reason is that the human body just can't function normally for a long time at that kind of altitude. We're physically not adapted to such conditions. Hypoxia or oxygen deprivation starts, and that's probably the most critical factor that sharply worsens climbers' health. With a lack of oxygen, the function of all organs is seriously impaired. At a low altitude, the sickness isn't too severe, just dizziness and shortness of breath. You can still cope with these symptoms, but higher up, as you climb, the effects get worse. 
Thoughts become muddled, the person loses the ability to think and make decisions, might lose consciousness, and ultimately die. Actually, passing out at that height during the climb when no one can help you is really scary. Basically, it's a situation that almost can't end well. But let me repeat, despite all this, Everest is not the deadliest mountain in the world. This sad title belongs to Annapurna 1 in the Himalayas of Nepal. It's the highest point of the Annapurna Massif. The 10th highest mountain on our planet is considered the deadliest in the world because the fatality rate for climbers here is about 33%. That means for every two people who successfully climb the mountain and come down, one person dies. Out of every 100 people who try to climb, 33 don't make it back. K2, the second highest mountain in the world, and Nanga Parbat, the ninth highest, hold the second and third places in this tragic list. Annapurna 1 is particularly deadly because of its distinct features. That is, despite being one of the world's top 10 highest peaks at 26,545 feet, it's considered one of the most difficult mountains to ascend. Climbers who've managed to reach the summit and descend say that some sections of Annapurna 1 are even tougher to climb compared to K2, Manaslu, and even Everest. Annapurna 1 is full of Siracs, huge ice pillars of crevasses, sharp ridges, and other complex features that turn climbing into a constant game with death. And also, the weather's often bad there. But let's get back to the main issue. Why are bodies on Everest not retrieved? The first problem with any such operation is clear. Someone has to get to the body. Most deaths happen in the section of the mountain above 25,900 feet known as the death zone. Moreover, some of the bodies are hidden under the snow, while others lie in deep crevices. Climbers fall into them during ascents, or the wind drags them there after death. There's only one small 15-day window in the year when climbers can ascend and descend from 26,000 feet. During this time, the winds slow down, making it possible to actually climb Everest. To give you an idea, in the death zone, wind speeds often exceed 62 miles per hour. So either you collect bodies from the mountain during these two weeks, or you don't collect them at all. The second problem of saving the dead is the cost. To bring down the body of the deceased will require thousands of dollars. Many people just can't afford to retrieve the bodies of their relatives who died in the mountains. Look, to lower a body from a height of 26,000 feet requires 12 people, each of whom needs four oxygen tanks. Each tank costs more than $400, meaning the total cost for oxygen alone will be approximately $20,000. And even if the deceased family has plenty of money to pay for the expenses, most private companies won't help to get bodies out of the death zone because it's too risky. But there are people who still take on the task of bringing back bodies. The cost of such a rescue mission in 2024 ranges from $75,000 to $80,000 per body. In fact, every climber who climbs Everest is legally obligated to have insurance that covers the expenses for their own rescue and recovery in case of an accident. Death is also covered by the insurance, but the issue is that this rule is applied inconsistently and extreme conditions can sometimes make rescue impossible. The body might weigh more than 220 pounds, but at high altitudes, a person's ability to handle heavy loads really goes down. At 26,000 feet, even tough Sherpas, the local people, can only carry up to 55 pounds, which is less than 30% of what they can carry at lower altitudes. To give you an idea, even lifting a wrapper high up on a mountain is a huge effort because it's completely frozen and it needs to be dug out. A body that usually weighs 175 pounds can weigh up to 330 pounds if it's frozen and dug out along with the surrounding ice, so it turns out that transporting one body can require up to eight rescuers, and that's the most conservative estimate. But alright, you can't move the bodies, and obviously there's nowhere to bury them, so maybe just burn them so they don't lie around in plain sight as a grim reminder of the dangers of Everest? Unfortunately, there isn't even enough wood or fuel for cremation on the mountain. And hauling all that up would be, to put it bluntly, a ridiculous idea. However, there's some unexpected, but good news. The Nepalese government has finally started gradually removing bodies from Everest. Cleanup campaign first kicked off in 2019, including trash collection and also the removal of some deceased climbers. It might not come off as very respectful to those who have passed, but as you see, there aren't really many choices. During this campaign, four unidentified bodies were lowered from the mountain in 2019, another five just recently in 2024. But with hundreds of bodies on Everest and the list of casualties continuously growing, the work is progressing slowly. 
On top of being really tough overall, climate change makes things even scarier. It causes the snow and ice to thin out, revealing more and more bodies of the hundreds of climbers who've died. Getting them out of there is a bleak, challenging, and risky task. Rescuers are people too, and they also experience discomfort. Headaches, vomiting, coughing, and other issues start because they have to spend a lot of time at high altitudes. Nevertheless, the government's paying for the return of bodies. In 2024, the military allocated 5 million rupees, or $37,400, for each body retrieval. The price? Let's just say it's very different from what private companies charge. However, the bodies are still brought down. First, they find the body. Then, it takes rescuers several hours to break the ice using small axes, and sometimes they even use boiling water. The more ice there is, the longer and harder the job is. For example, it took climbers 11 hours of work in deadly conditions to free a body encased in ice up to its torso. And it's not enough to just get the body out, it also needs to be brought down. Often, they wrap the body in a bag, then put it on plastic sleds and drag it down. It took 24 hours non-stop to get the body, which is thought to belong to a Czech mountaineer, to the nearest camp, which is only 2.2 miles from where he died. Then the team spent another 13 hours lowering the body to a camp below. Normally, bodies are flown to Kathmandu by a helicopter, but for the Czech climber, the crew was stuck in Namchi for five days because of bad weather. It's only after the body is brought to the final destination that the identification and burial process happens. And don't forget to add working at night to the list of challenges, because after finding the team's bodies, they often work after dark to avoid disturbing other climbers, not to interfere with their ascent and descent. But why did they suddenly start taking the bodies away? I mean, for a hundred years, they were just lying on Everest and no one cared. What changed? Well, the Nepali authorities say it's necessary. The bodies are piling up, and now there are real concerns that the mountain will just turn into a huge graveyard. Plus, many people climbing Everest believe they're entering a divine realm, and here are dead bodies. It doesn't really feel very divine. So finally, the most important question. If people regularly die on Everest and it's so hard to remove them, why not just ban climbs? Well, first of all, they don't let just anyone up the mountain. Before climbing, people go through a medical checkup and special preliminary training. If a person's healthy, knows what they need to know, and climbing is a rational, sensible decision for them, then it's strange to ban them from doing it. And secondly, it's just not profitable. Everest brings Nepal tens of millions of dollars and almost as much to local guides who each year take more and more climbers up the mountain. Just think, an expedition to Everest costs a climber $50,000, and that's the bare minimum. And if you add extra services like increasing your oxygen supply, the price goes up to $67,500, and that's still cheap. There are companies that charge much more. And even if you want to just climb up without any help from a guide, you need to get a permit, which can cost between ten dollars and $20,000. This permit only covers the cost of entry to the mountain, kind of like an admission ticket, and after that, you're on your own. And if you add additional expenses for transportation to and from, services of climbing guides, oxygen tanks, tents, and communication equipment, it'll all cost over $200,000. Who wouldn't want to make such a profit? New Death Rate Record The year 2023 broke the record for deaths on Everest. 17 people died. And some sources say 18, making it the highest confirmed number of deaths so far. In 2023, along with an increase in deaths, climbers experienced a surge in cases of frostbite and calls for rescue operations mid-climb. Why did this happen? Well, some sources attribute this trend to the record number of permits issued to foreign climbers by Nepal in 2023. There were 478 of them. And as usual, another possible reason is climate change. While it's getting hotter somewhere, it's only getting colder at the top of Everest. Risk it 30 times. Not long ago, renowned mountain guide Kami Rita came back from Everest after his record 30th climb. Just think, reaching the top there 30 times. And he's planning to keep doing it just like before. Kami Rita first conquered Everest in 1994 and has climbed it almost every year since, except for 2014, 2015, and 2020. The climbs were paused for various reasons, but each time the guide returned to the mountain from which many never managed to get back down. Mountain Delivery 
In June 2024, Everest received its first ever delivery by drones. This amazing achievement marked the first time drones were used to deliver goods to climbers. During this test, the drone had to carry three oxygen tanks and three pounds of cargo from the base camp of Everest to another camp and then return with the waste. And of course, it's possible to assume that one day drones will be able to bring down the bodies of those who died from places that people can't reach. What? After all, progress doesn't stand still. Mountain Freshness The bodies that terrify every climber are understandable, but they're not the only ones lying on Everest. Massive piles of human waste are also causing a foul odor on the world's highest peak, which is seriously angering the local authorities. Literally tons of human waste have been dumped between Camp 1 and Camp 4 on Mount Everest. Due to the extreme conditions at high altitudes, most of this waste doesn't fully decompose and can stay for years, stay and smell. I'm not kidding. To tackle this issue, the rural municipality of Pasang Lamu, the local governing body responsible for most of the Everest region, requires climbers to buy special poop bags at the base camp. Then, upon returning, the bags are checked by the authorities. To me, this doesn't seem like the kind of adventure you'd anticipate while climbing Everest. Well, you owe me a like since you're here at the end of the video. See you later.